Hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day out, out there. It's beautiful. Uh, beautiful blue skies again. Uh, not too hot. It's just a beautiful summer day. And, uh, you know, we, we need to take advantage when we have those days. We're uh, headed towards cooler weather, fall, and even uh, winter's coming not too long in the future. Seems like hard to believe that we're already, you know, past the middle of August. But uh, uh, we need to enjoy a beautiful day like today. So I uh, need to get out there and, and uh, find some time outside. Well, we are back in the Version Bible uh, app, the uh, Bible.com and uh, another one of these who I am in Christ or identity in Christ, who who Christ says we are. Again, we, we just need to know that. We need to understand who we are in him and not not according to our world, not according to the things we believe about ourselves even, but, but who we are in Christ is what's most important about us. Uh, do you believe that? The most important thing about you is who, who God says you are? I, I hope so. I hope you know that and live in that daily. Because it's easy to get caught up in what the world says, but you don't have to. Uh, you can find the freedom, you can find the joy, you can find the peace uh, that's only found in Jesus. He's the one that uh, gives it to us, helps us find it, and uh, helps us to live in it. Uh, so, so that's what we're doing in this devotional. Uh, today's the title is "I'm Safe from the Evil One." Uh, you know, the I, I believe that. Uh, uh, you know, the devil has, has uh, I mean, he's, he's strong, he's powerful, but he has no, no dominion over, over us because of Jesus. Because of what, of Je what Jesus has done, he is the one in charge. He is the one in control. And uh, we, we can, you know, he's the one that we put our hope in and trust in. And we know he, you know, we are more than overcomers, as we talked about yesterday, because of him. Well, let's dig into to this devotional. It begins with a quote from Lisa Bevere. Uh, it says, I believe that the attacks on your life have much more to do with who you might be in the future than who you have been in the past. Uh, and sometimes we, we live in the past and we let it affect our future. And I, I think that, that when the devil attacks us, it's, it's about who he wants to see us become in the future. He wants us to react and live in the past so that it affects our future. We don't, so we don't live in all that Jesus has for us uh, for the future. We, we, you know, again, it's who do we have our eyes on? Who do we trust? Who do we have faith in? And it's it's all about Jesus. Uh, well, let's go get into the to the meat of of the devotional. It says we all get stuck sometimes, stuck in cyclical patterns of discouragement and disillusionment. Oftentimes we keep going in the same toxic pattern, making the same poor decisions that lead to the same unfortunate outcomes. Uh, have you known that? Have you known that in times in your life where you just kind of get in a rut and you just keep going with those things? And sometimes it's they're toxic ruts, you know, discouragement, disillusionment, whatever. Uh, you, you, you maybe have a doubt and you hold on to that doubt and you don't take it to the Lord and don't seek uh, healing and, and correction from him that, that will lead you to where you need to go. We do that a lot, don't we? And uh, it says, did you know that our spiritual enemy loves this? He loves it when we get in those patterns, when we get in those places of doubt, those places of struggle, those places of, oh, just not living in all that God has for us. Uh, it says he is absolutely hoping that we stay, we'll stay in a place that is not only far from God, but one where we doubt the goodness of God. And there are kind of two things there that I think are, are really good. You know, we stay in a place that's not only are, are good for us to pay attention to and, and, and move out of, uh, is not only far from God. It's one thing to be far from God, uh, be distant from Him, where we don't, don't have the relationship with Him that we need to have. But, but when we doubt the very goodness of God, where we struggle with His goodness, does He love us? Does He care about us? Is he involved in our lives where we get caught up in just the stuff of this life? And it'd be, it's easy to do in these days, uh, these days of struggle, these days of the pandemic, days of racial issues and pol political issues and all this stuff. It's easy to, to get to a place where we, we get in that cycle of struggle and, and, and doubt and discouragement. And then and it leads us to question the goodness of God. Is God really there? Does he really care? The devotional goes on. I'm thankful it doesn't end there. It says the, the Bible calls the devil the father of lies. He isn't called the father of divorce or hatred or fear or, or any of those kind of things. And we, we think, you know, in a way he is because a lot of those things begin with lies that the, that the devil tells us. 
He is the father of lies. He can't not lie, for it's his native language. Uh, that's that's a, a powerful truth, a reality about the devil. There's never an ounce of truth that departs from him or any of the demons he sends on harassing assignments. But don't let that alarm you. And this is where it really turns and is so beautiful. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Uh, again, like I said, we, we don't have to fear the devil because of, of Jesus, because of what he has done, because of what he's done for us. And, and the uh, devotional invites us to let that sink in. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Uh, God is greater. Jesus is greater. He's the one we follow. He's our Lord. He's, he's in charge. He's in control. Uh, the God of the universe resides in you as a Christ follower, and he is greater than our spiritual adversary. Yes, our enemy seeks to wreak havoc in our lives, and he tries and he tries and he tries, and he does all kinds of things. Yes, he, he wants to steer us away from falling God. Yes, he wants to, us to feel defeated so we will live in shame. But we don't have to because of Jesus. Um, you know, he is the devotional that says, but he does not have the final say. God does. God is ultimately in control. Uh, you know, I think that the, the devil really only has the power that we allow him to have in our life. And uh, we need to keep him away. We need to keep turning to Jesus. Uh, something this this devotional doesn't mention, but I, I think of the full armor of God. We we put on that full armor, and we uh, uh, you know we can go to battle. Uh, we go through this life dealing with all the things that we deal with. Uh, and the devotional goes. And this doesn't mean the devil won't still come after you to convince you to live for yourself. He will, uh, and he's pretty good at that. What it does mean is that he has no hold on you, and the more you spend time relishing in God's truth within the pages of the Bible, the more you'll see the devil for who he really is. Um, I like this definition of, of the devil. He, a measly pest that can be swatted away with God's holy word. Uh, he may be like a, a fly. Uh, the other day we were driving down the road, and we had, actually yesterday, driving down the road, we had a fly that got in the car, and we couldn't get it out, and he just kept bugging us, and, and you know, he'd fly into one of us and fly around, and he, he just wouldn't go away. Uh, until eventually we, we got him to go out the window. But uh, sometimes you got to swat a fly like that or get rid of a fly. Uh, you know, that's kind of the way I see the devil is. He attacks us in little ways, and we, we just have to fend him off. Keep, keep Well, and the devil comes knocking, and we send the Lord to the door. I've heard that said uh, before. Uh, the devil wants to strike fear in you and make you feel unsafe. That could not be further from the truth because of what God has done and will continue to do in your life. You are safe from the evil one. Stand on that truth. Who are you in Christ? Well, in Christ, you, you can stand against the devil. You can keep him you know, uh, at arm's length or long, further away than that. Uh, you know, he will run away at the name of Jesus. Uh, stand on that truth. We can live in that reality, live in that truth. Well, here's the reflect section. Uh, again, the devotional, it's the same as it's been all the other days, in your own words, write down what I am safe from the evil one means to you. What does that truth mean to you in your life? How does it affect you? What, does it, what, does it, what do you need to change to make sure you're living in that, in that truth? Then finally, repeat, I am safe from the evil one throughout your day. Write it on a note card. Write it on your, you know, put it on the mirror. Uh, put it on your dashboard, uh, wherever, so that you can see it on your desk, uh, whatever, that uh, you are safe from the evil one. And then finally, think of a situation you have faced or will face where you can apply this truth. Where can you apply it in your life, in your heart? What, what can you do uh, with that to, to, uh, to make, make your life different, to live in who Christ says you are? You know, that's, that's what's, what's most important. Then looking at some of the scriptures, uh, John 17, 15 has mentioned, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. The, 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 the great uh, prayer from Jesus uh, right before he, he uh, went to the cross. Uh, and, and, you know, my prayer is not, he asked the Father, prayer, prayer is not you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. That's, that's a truth we can, can hold on to. And then the, the next passage, it comes from John chapter 8. And, and really this is a passage where, where Jesus so clearly declares who he is that he is the Son of God, that he is the Messiah, that he's the one that, that came to, uh, to save the world. And he, and he kind of has this back and forth 
uh, discussion with, with a group of, of well, of Jews. Uh, they're there. Some believed in him. Uh, some didn't. And, and he, he says some different different things to them. Like I said, they kind of go back and forth as to him telling them who he is and, and them trying to deal with that and understand what it means as Jews and, and from their perspective as Jews. And, and I, I want to pick it up in verse 31. Uh, this is what it says, it says to, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And, and they struggle with that. They say, well, we, we are Abraham's descendants and, and have been slaves to, to have been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we would be set free? In other words, they, they don't really see their need for Jesus, their, their need for saving. And, and Jesus says this, he says, very truly in verse 34, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You're bound by, by your sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Uh, powerful, powerful verse. If the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you're Abraham's descendants. He says, yeah, I know you're Jews. And, and you, you, know, you, you, you're, you go back to Abraham uh, as the father of your faith, of who you are. Uh, it says, yet, Jesus said, yet you are, are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. And they're like, oh, they couldn't understand it. They say, Abraham's our father, so what are you saying, Jesus? And Jesus says, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do what Abraham did. Uh, we've been looking at uh, Hebrews 11 by faith and, and all that Abraham did. Uh, by faith. And and anyway, Jesus goes on, as it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. And they still don't get it. They say, we're not illegitimate children. They protested, the only father we have is God himself. And Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Again, they just can't quite get it. Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father. And here's where it ties in with our devotional. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. And, and kind of the point being that this is this, uh, Jesus is saying, you know, you're, you're on one side or the other. You belong to God, you belong to the Father, or you belong to the devil. You belong to uh, following his ways, speaking his language, uh, all those kinds of things. It's just a, this, this contrasting uh, thing. And, and we need to ask ourselves, who do we belong to? Who do we live for? Are we afraid of the devil? Uh, or do we find our power? Are we more than a conqueror through Jesus who died for us? Um, something we need to think about and, and, and just continually. You know, if we're worrying, if we're fretting, if we're, you know, they're again, the father of lies. Uh, if we're listening to him and not to, to God the Father, who he says we are, uh, then, then we're, we're, we're in trouble. And the final verse that it mentions here, 1 John 4.4, 4, uh, kind of the key to this. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Uh, that's what we hold on to. That's what we believe. You know, who I am in Christ, our identity is in him. Our power comes from him. He he is greater than the one who's in the world. Well, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, uh, help us to, to recognize this truth, this reality, that greater is he that is in me, that is in, in us, that lives in us, that died for us, uh, that went to a cruel cross and, and came out victorious. Uh, the tomb is empty. And Lord, we live in that reality. We thank you for that truth, that you are greater you are, are more powerful. And so we don't have to be afraid of the evil one. Uh, yes, he tries to get at us, but we, we can shoo him away like a pesky fly uh, because of your strength, because of your love, because of your watch care over us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for that. 
Help us to live in that, that reality. Lord, we lift up uh, all those that are struggling right now with the, the coronavirus, Lord. Uh, be near to them that have it, that keep them safe, Lord. Bring healing to their bodies. Uh, be with doctors, nurses, first responders who are, uh, I know, seeing an uptick in, in patients that are coming to them. And we pray that uh, uh, you would protect them and help them as they diagnose and treat. Lord, give them wisdom uh, just each and every day and, and help them as they, they deal with this. Lord, continue to, to be with our nation, bring uh, uh, unity. Lord, uh, we're divided politically and racially in so many different ways. And we just pray for your your wisdom to trump to trump all to to, to come uh, into power and and to uh, lead us, Lord. We need our leaders to look to you. We we lift our president and governor and uh, you know, all our local leaders, uh, Lord. Give them wisdom and help them, Lord, as they lead us in in all these things. As we uh, we need them to be your your people, uh, but Lord, most of all, help us to be your people. Help us to live for you, to follow you. Lord, we, uh, we, again, we need your presence. We need your help. Uh, Lord, just uh, help us to recognize who we are in you, uh, especially that we can uh, live victoriously in you. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today, and uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy this beautiful weather. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.